Bosses have been a staple of gaming ever since gaming was a thing, and over time, more and more games have used bosses as a way to add difficulty to them. Some are tough enemies with attack patterns to memorize, like in Elden Ring and Hollow Knight. Or it could be something like trying to have fun during Winter in Stardew Valley. And Pikmin is by no means an exception to having bosses. In just the first three games alone, there is a grand total of 25 unique bosses. Then with the recent release of Pikmin 4, and with Pikmin 4 being the biggest game in the series by far, that amount increased to 44, which is almost double the amount from before, and every single boss has its own unique way of fighting and defeating it. Mostly. But since most of them are unique, some have to be better than others, right? So I, AKB Rhino, have taken it upon myself to decide which of the bosses in the Pikmin series is definitively the best. Before we get into the video, I'm going to clarify some things. First off, I'm going to be ranking all of the same bosses into one spot, similarly to what I did for the Pikmin ranking video. So no Pikmin 1 Burrowing Snagret and Pikmin 2 Burrowing Snagret, it's just one combined Burrowing Snagret. And secondly, these are all just my opinions, so if you disagree with some or all of them, which I expect you to, that's completely fine. But with that out of the way, let's get right into the ranking. Alright, so the first and worst boss on this list is, uh, the Tusked Blowhog from Pikmin 4. I mean, can you even call this a boss? The only reason it's here is because the Pikmin wiki groups the Tusked Blowhog into the Tough Enemy Encounter category, which also consists of bosses like the Arctic Cannon Beetle and the Mammoth Snootwhacker. So I guess in order to be fair, if I'm adding the other bosses in that category, then I have to add the Tusked Blowhog to this list as well. But it's so pathetic and easily the worst boss on this list. It can barely even hurt you. Throw a few Pikmin on it and it'll die before it can even start eating one of them. And it doesn't even drop anything good! In the Hectic Hollow's cave, which is where you fight this guy as a boss, you can just walk around it. There's some platforms in the arena that you can jump up onto and it's not like it can jump so it can't even get to you. Just grab the castaway and leave. But like I said before, it only takes like 15 Pikmin to kill it, so you might as well get it over with and just move on. The Dust Blog is without a doubt deserving of the title of worst boss on this list, and in all of Pikmin. So yeah, it goes in the 44th spot on the list. Next up is the Puffy Blowhog from Pikmin 4. Again, this is a boss that was categorized in the Tough Enemies list, and the only reason it's higher than the Tusk Blowhog is because it's a little harder to kill, and it actually drops something useful, that being a castaway. But this is still the Puffy Blowhog we're talking about, like, the regular enemy. It's still really easy, and can't even kill your Pikmin unless you happen to be next to the edge and some Pikmin get blown into the void. But in the end, it's an easy boss, barely better than the Tusk Blowhog, so it makes its way to the 43rd spot on this list. The next boss on this list is the Mamuta from Pikmin 1. The Mamuta, much like the Puffy Blowhog and Tusked Blowhog, is incredibly easy to kill, and also can't hurt your Pikmin. But there is an upside to the Mamuta, which is that it can bury your Pikmin and give them flowers for free. I've used this trick on many occasions during my playthroughs, and it's way better than hunting for nectar. Also, the Mamuta is a secret boss, and I do love myself a secret boss. But the Mamuta isn't really fun to fight, nor does it give anything useful, and on top of that, you have to spend one of your 30 days just to encounter it. So the Mamuta fits well at the 42nd spot. Next up on the list is the Master Hop from Pikmin 4. What is there to say about this guy really? It's just a giant Wallywog. Nothing special about it. But it can actually kill your Pikmin, and it does give a castaway when it's defeated, so it is at least better than the three bosses before it. Also, it's very satisfying to kill it by freezing it midair with Ice Pikmin, and then it falls and dies instantly. But yeah, very lazy boss design in my opinion, and I hate Wallywogs by nature, so the Master Hop sits comfortably in the 41st spot. The next boss on the list is the Jumbo Bulborb from Pikmin 4. Again, this boss is just a giant version of another enemy in Pikmin. I do like the Jumbo Bulborb more than the Master Hop though, because Bulborbs are cooler than Wallywogs. Other than that though, it is a very easy boss fight, especially since you should have purple Pikmin by the time you find the Jumbo Bulborb, but you do get to encounter it twice, which makes the fight more memorable, so the Jumbo Bulborb goes to the 40th spot on the list. Now for the next boss on the list, which is the Titan Blowhog from Pikmin 4. I think you can see the pattern by now. 
Just because the boss is big doesn't make it unique, and it's the same for the Titan Blowhog. Although, unlike the other two, the Titan Blowhog isn't just a copy of an original enemy that's bigger and with more health. The Titan Blowhog is actually a more difficult fight because it attacks faster than a regular Blowhog. And since it has more health, you can't just dodge the first attack and then kill it instantly. Especially since it only shows up in two places, which are at the beginning of Olimar's Shipwreck Tale, which doesn't have purple or rock Pikmin to kill it instantly, and the other place is the Cavern for a King, which, to be fair, the Titan Blowhog does get shredded there, but so does every other boss. But the Titan Blowhog is still not a unique boss, and it's not very fun, so it only makes its way to the 39th spot on the list. Next up is the Blizzarding Blowhog from Pikmin 4. I'm not going to say much about this guy, because it's literally just the Titan Blowhog but ice. Still not unique, but the design is at least a little cooler and does add variety, so the Blizzarding Blowhog sits just above the Titan Blowhog at the 38th spot on the list. The next boss on the list is the Bloom Cat Bloister from Pikmin 4. Finally, a unique boss that can actually pose a threat to your Pikmin. But let's not give the Bloister too much credit because it's still really easy to dodge, and the only way it can deal damage is by moving its incredibly small mouth right on top of your Pikmin. And when the Bloister is slower than you, then you can just run to its back and kill it. But it is a unique boss, and if it does somehow make its way to your Pikmin, then it can kind of shred through them surprisingly fast. So the Bloomcat Bloister makes its way to the 37th spot on the list. Next up is the Porquillion from Pikmin 4. This boss is unique in that you're forced to dodge its attacks, and the more you dodge, the easier it is to attack it. I would say it's a challenging fight, but it really isn't. The spines it shoots out are way too slow, and having to wait for the Porquillion to shoot them out is really boring and tedious. But I did like that it was the first boss that you fight, and it's a really nice tutorial boss. It's also cool to run into it from time to time during your playthrough, as it slowly becomes less of a boss and more like a mini boss. Still a really slow fight though, especially when it's at a sliver of health left and then it regrows all its spines and you have to wait while the clock ticks down during the 9th stage league trial and then you get only a gold medal because you couldn't kill it just a little bit sooner. But I digress. With that, the Porquillion receives the 36th spot on this list. Next up on the list is the Gulix from Pikmin 1. This boss's design is pretty cool. You have to throw Pikmin onto the orangish ball, which I think is its brain, until it's dead. But as long as you only have blue Pikmin with you, then it can't really do anything to you. I do like that you can beat this boss as fast as you want though, and if you wait for the Gulix to stretch out before hitting its brain, then it will fling its brain into the hard marble in the middle, which does a lot more damage, which is a really cool mechanic. And it's also a secret boss, like the Mamuta, so get some bonus points from me for that. But it's really easy and can't exactly hurt you, and much like the Mamuta, you have to spend a day going to the impact site just to encounter it. So the Gulix sits comfortably in the 35th spot on the list. Now time for another Pikmin 4 boss, the Mammoth Snootwhacker. This boss is very easy to beat, and much like the Porquillion, it is a very slow fight, but still a unique fight. In order to deal damage to it, you have to have Ochi charge into it in order to knock it down, and after that you're thinking, okay, now I can attack it since it fell down. But it only fell down onto its stomach, so its armor is still defending it, and the Pikmin don't deal any damage. So you charge into it again, and then it flips over and you can attack it. It's not much, but I was genuinely confused when I first fought the Snootwhacker. But now it's just a tedious fight like the Porquillion. I did decide to put the Snootwhacker higher up because it does have multiple attacks, which keeps the fight more interesting, and it also has some sick breakdancing skills. So the Mammoth Snootwhacker makes its way to the 34th spot on the list. The next boss on the list is the Snowfake Fluttertail from Pikmin 4. And yes, it is called the Snowfake Fluttertail. It took me six months to notice this. This boss has a very cool design, no pun intended. It plays with the fire starter mechanic because the boss is covered in a layer of ice and you have to throw the fire starters at it to get rid of that so that you can actually attack it. With a design like this, it's clear that it's a very late game boss. And you know what else appears later in the game? That's right, purple Pikmin. And you want to know what purple Pikmin do? Yep, they annihilate anything they come in contact with. So unfortunately, you don't get to see how cool the boss is for very long because one or two cycles pretty much kills it as long as you have purple Pikmin. But it is a decently fun fight while it lasts. I do have to admit though that I completely forgot who this boss was before making this video, so unfortunately the Snowfake Fluttertail is pretty forgettable at least to me. So all this combined puts the Fluttertail in the 33rd spot on the list.
Next up is the Arctic Candy Beetle from Pikmin 4. I have a soft spot in my heart for this boss because I really like the design of the armored cannon beetle, and the arctic cannon beetle is basically just a cooler looking version of it. Again, no pun intended. So you might be wondering why it's lower down on the list than the armored cannon beetle. Well that's because the arctic cannon beetle can't actually kill your pikmin, unless it sucks them up with its extremely telegraphed attack. And the snowballs it shoots out don't crush pikmin, but instead just carry the pikmin with it until it hits something, and then it releases the pikmin fully intact. The Arctic Cannon Beetle Arena in the Cavern for a King attempts to balance this by making it more of a puzzle than a boss fight, but I'd much rather have a boss fight than another puzzle in Pikmin 4 where almost every cave is filled with puzzles. So that's why the Arctic Cannon Beetle is in the 30 second spot on the list. Now it's time for the Armored Cannon Beetle from Pikmin 1. Much like the Blizzarding Blowhog, everything is the same between the Arctic Cannon Beetle and the Armored Cannon Beetle, but the Armored one can actually kill Pikmin. Also the way you attack the armored cannon beetle is a little different. You have to throw a pikmin into the spot on its head while it's sucking up air to shoot out a boulder, and then its back wings will open up so you can attack it. This technique isn't seen anywhere else in the series and is very unique and I really like it, which is why it's earned its spot in the 31st spot on the list. Next up is the first and worst of the spider bosses, the beady long legs from Pikmin 1 and 2. This boss is very nostalgic to me as it is one of the four big bosses in Pikmin 1, and it is also incredibly deadly in Pikmin 1. Not because it's any different than in Pikmin 2, but the Pikmin AI in Pikmin 1 just absolutely sucks, so the fight isn't a good kind of difficult. The pathfinding of the Pikmin just makes the fight more annoying instead of fun. Like what are you supposed to do when your Pikmin decide it's a good idea to just move right underneath the BD Longlegs foot? But that's just in Pikmin 1. In Pikmin 2, the AI is way better, and during the BD Longlegs fight, you're actually fighting the boss instead of the pathfinding. But with good pathfinding, the BD Longlegs kinda just gets killed in like 10 seconds. But I guess there's only so much you can do. So with all that combined, the BD Longlegs earns the 30th spot on the list. Now for the 29th spot on the list, we have the Baldi Longlegs from Pikmin 3 and 4. Basically the same as the BD Longlegs, but it's even more fun to fight because of the lock-on system, which makes it so you just have to throw the Pikmin and not aim. And if you have winged Pikmin, then you just lock on, charge, and the Baldi Longlegs is dead. Yes, it's incredibly easy, but just because it's easy doesn't mean it's not fun. So basically, BD Longlegs, but more fun. So the Baldi Longlegs makes its way to the 29th spot on the list. Now for the third Arachnid boss in a row, the Shaggy Longlegs from Pikmin 3. Weirdly enough, the Shaggy Longlegs never appears in Pikmin 4, yet the Baldi Longlegs does. Anyway, the Shaggy Longlegs is basically a harder version of the Baldi Longlegs. Instead of being able to immediately attack, you have to send your Pikmin up its legs to smack the hair off of its 8 knees, which then turns it into the Baldi Longlegs, and then it's the same fight as before. Some people say, All the hair does is make an already boring fight twice as long. But I, for one, find the Shaggy Longlegs much more fun than the Baldi Longlegs. Especially when you send small squads of Pikmin on each of the legs to clear four spots of hair at once, and oh man is that satisfying. Plus it makes the fight more memorable. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, but there are two semi-secret golden versions of the Baldi Longlegs and Shaggy Longlegs at the end of all of our side story in Pikmin 3, which is pretty cool. So the Shaggy Longlegs sits comfortably at the 28th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Tox Stool from Pikmin 4. When I first saw this guy, I was so excited because the Puff Stool was and still is a very nostalgic boss for me and I really like it. So when I saw a poisonous version of it at the beginning of the Cavern of King, I was super excited. Then I actually fought it and I found out that it actually doesn't hurt your Pikmin. Like it doesn't deal any sort of damage. Its poisonous looking gas attack doesn't actually poison your Pikmin. All it does is revive the poisonous enemies and mushrooms on the ground. So not only was the boss a letdown, it was a complete pushover. But still, I do like the look of the Tox Stool, and the mechanic is very unique, even if it is super easy to defeat. So the Tox Stool goes in the 27th spot on the list. Next up is the Puff Stool from Pikmin 1 and 4. This boss is one of my personal favorites in the whole series. I really love the concept of brainwashing your Pikmin and turning them into Puffmen in order to attack you instead of the Puff Stool. I remember how scared I was to fight this guy when I was younger because I lost all of my Pikmin when I fought it for the first time when I was like 7 years old, and then when I got older, I still got completely annihilated by it and I never played the game again. 
Until a few years later when I played it again and killed it almost instantly by just rushing it and killing it before it gets back up. It was way easier than I remembered it being and unfortunately it makes it lose a bit of coolness in my eyes now that I'm older, but the nostalgia from how terrifying it used to be when I was younger is still there. Which is why it was all the more disappointing in Pikmin 4 when I found it in the primordial thicket, not only did it die just as fast, if not faster than in Pikmin 1, it doesn't even turn your Pikmin into Puffman anymore. All it does is make your Pikmin jump around in confusion until you beat it, which really upset me when I first played it. But the Pikmin 1 version of the fight is still really cool and I still really like the boss design. So the Puff Stool will go in the 26th spot on the list. For the next boss on the list, we have the Emperor Boblax from Pikmin 2 and Pikmin 4. Surprisingly, this is only the second boss from Pikmin 2 on this list. So, so far, Pikmin 2's bosses have been pretty good. That being said, the Emperor Boblax breaks this streak at the 25th spot on the list, and that is for a good reason. The Emperor Boblax's only attack is to stick its tongue out, which is incredibly slow, and the range of it is smaller than your range to throw Pikmin. So you can attack the Emperor Boblax while out of reach of its tongue, but that's assuming it even gets to attack. Because you see, the Ember Boblax happens to be in the two Pikmin games that also have the dreaded Purple Pikmin. And as we all know, they absolutely shred through anything and everything in their path except for bosses. Well, most bosses, that is. Because as long as you can throw fast enough, then Purple Pikmin can kill an Emperor Boblax before it even gets done with its waking up animation. So this guy honestly isn't even a challenge. And it doesn't help that in Pikmin 2, you get Purple Pikmin before you even fight your first boss, let alone the Emperor Boblax. At least in Pikmin 4, you're able to fight it for the first time before you get purples, but you're still able to get purples before then. Honestly though, there is nothing quite as satisfying as watching a giant fierce bulwarb jump out and ambush you only for it to die from a thousand pounds of Pikmin. So for that reason, the Emperor Boblax sits at the 25th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Burrowing Snaggerett from Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and 4. Fun fact, this is the only boss in the entire series that appears in every main series Pikmin game. Unless you count the BD and Baldi Longlegs as the same boss, but they're technically different even though they're pretty much the same. Anyway, the Burrowing Snaggerett is probably the most average boss in the entire series. Not too hard, not too easy. It might change from game to game a bit, but it is the stock standard boss in every game. The hitbox on its head can be a little challenging to hit for new players, but once you get the hang of it, then it'll be no time until you're consistently killing them at pretty fast speeds. Except for in Pikmin 3 and 4, where you can lock on, which makes it pathetically easy to fight, especially with Wing Pikmin, because then you can just charge instead of having to throw them, and because of how Wing Pikmin work, they all latch on instantly and shred through the boss's health. But that's only really a problem in Pikmin 3, because in Pikmin 4, you fight the Snagger for the first time before you get Wing Pikmin, and when purples are in the game, is it really considered cheesing if you could just kill them even faster with them? Anyway, the Burling Snagger is also one of the more memorable bosses, because 1. They appear in every game, and 2. They all have an initial boss fight, but then they show up later as a mini boss in every game, besides Pikmin 1 and 3. But in Pikmin 3, it starts as a mini boss, and Pikmin 1 doesn't have that many bosses in the first place. But the mini boss aspect of the Burling Snagger is very cool and makes the boss more fun and memorable. So all this combined puts the Burling Snagger in the 24th spot on the list. Next up is the Gildamander from Pikmin 4. The Gildamander is kind of a strange boss for me. It's a really fun and dopey looking boss, which I absolutely love, but that's not the only thing I like about it. The design of the boss is really cool as well, having to knock off the gold pieces on its back in order to reach its weak spot, and then being able to break the pieces so that it can't put the pieces back onto its back is a cool detail as well. It reminds me of the Plasma Wreath fight in a way, where you have to break the gold goo it spews out. Another thing about the gold pieces that I found out as well, is that if you happen to have a large amount of Pikmin breaking a piece at the same time, and the Gildamander just happens to walk over and pick it up, then every single one of those Pikmin will die. So if you're not paying enough attention, then you could get completely owned by this guy. But you have to really be paying attention for this to happen, and the fight is also pretty straightforward, and once you figure it out, it's really easy and kind of gets boring. So with that, the Gildamander makes its way to the 23rd spot on the list. Next up is the Pileated Snagger from Pikmin 2. Personally, I absolutely hate to fight this guy. Probably the least fun fight in Pikmin 2 to go up against, to be honest. And that's because of the difficulty for me. When I play Pikmin 2, I hate to lose Pikmin to bosses much like anyone. 
but that's because I know how to fight every boss without losing any Pikmin. Except for the Pileated Snagger. For some reason, I can never beat this big green and orange bird snake without losing at least one Pikmin, and it's so annoying. But in a way, it makes the fight fun, because it's an actually challenging fight in Pikmin 2, which is very rare because purple Pikmin shred through anything. But purple Pikmin can't reach its head, which makes it so you can't kill it instantly, hence why I always lose a Pikmin. The arena you fight in is also a pretty unique design. All the small hallways you can hide in so you can't attack you, and then the small hill in the middle that if you position yourself well, then you can stand on top of the hill while the snagger is lower down, which makes it so your purples can reach its head. But it's pretty difficult to do and very risky for your purples because they can't run away very well and are likely to get eaten, so I would recommend just using regular Pikmin from a regular distance. Overall, a very challenging fight and only sometimes fun, but that only makes it more unique, so that puts the Pileated Snagger in the 22nd spot on the list. I swear though, this guy never gets stuck coming out of the ground. The next boss on the list is the Fulix from Pikmin 4. The Fulix fight is a pretty cool fight. When you go into the boss room, it's not initially there. There's only a single piece of nectar on the ground, and when I saw this, I thought that it was going to be the burrowing snagger, because the snagger fight is almost always associated with eggs and nectar. But then I threw a Pikmin at the nectar, and instead a big yellow Gulix came out and started attacking it, and I'll admit that I was pretty surprised by it. Then it took me a little bit to figure out that I had to pull its tail to get its head outside of the yellow goop it's in, and then attack it. Very pleasant boss fight to have near the beginning of the game, but if I remember correctly, the boss can't kill your Pikmin, so if you know that, then there aren't really any stakes in the boss fight. Regardless, the Fulix is in the 21st spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Crusted Rum Pump from Pikmin 4. This boss is a lot like the Fulix, but I think the Rum Pump has a better design and execution to the idea. When I fought it for the first time, it took me a surprisingly long time to figure out how to attack it. And then when I did figure it out, it was actually a little difficult for me to aim and actually bring his tail down. But once I got used to it, then it was about the same difficulty and fun as the Fulix. Also, can I just say that the Crusted Rum Pump's music is surprisingly good. The Crusted Rum Pump's theme is so much more fun to listen to than most of the other bosses' themes. Other than that though, there's not much else, so the Crusted Rum Pump is put at the 20th spot on the list. The next boss on the list is the Scornet Maestro from Pikmin 3. The first main boss from Pikmin 3 on this list. The Scornet Maestro was very hard to decide what to do with because, on one hand, you can have a very cool fight with lots of quick thinking you have to go through in order to not lose any Pikmin, and then on the other hand, you can just charge in with an army of winged Pikmin and drop the Maestro almost instantly. It's such a sad sight to see this boss being able to be killed in less than like 2 minutes, so fast in fact that sometimes the health is damage capped so you don't kill it too fast. I remember fighting this boss when I was younger for the first time, and it was an actual challenge and fun fight, because I didn't know that you could kill it so fast just by brute forcing it. I've done playthroughs where I don't try to kill it as fast as possible, and I actually let the maestro do its attacks, and it's actually really fun to have to get out of the attacks in a fair way and fight the Scornet Maestro for real. Also it's a really cool mechanic to be able to save your Pikmin if they get grabbed by the Scornets during the attacks, by throwing other Pikmin to kill the Scornets that are holding them hostage, and then the Scornets are permanently dead, and there will be less Scornets to attack you later. It's really such a shame how easily you can kill the maestro because it's a really fun fight. But because it can be killed so fast, it doesn't feel right putting it any higher on the list. So the Scornet Maestro will be put at the 19th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Empress Bulblax from Pikmin 2 and 4. The Empress Bulblax is a pretty straightforward boss when you first encounter her. She rolls from side to side when you attack her. I mean, how much more straightforward can you get? Which kind of makes sense as the first boss in Pikmin 2 and one of the earlier bosses in Pikmin 4. But the fight actually gets good when you encounter her later again in the games, because then she starts spawning Bulborb larvas to come and attack you, which honestly is really hard and annoying to deal with, at least if you don't have a captain punching them constantly when they spawn, or have Ochi dealing with them. But the fun doesn't stop there. Later you fight her for a third time, and in this one, honestly it's not that much different. In Pikmin 2 it just rains boulders when she hits the walls, and if you're not standing in the open, then you'll be fine. But in Pikmin 4, it's a lot better. The third time you fight the Empress Bulblax in Pikmin 4, she's in a very small arena, like incredibly small, and you can only attack her from the side. So in order to dodge her, you have to wait for her attacks and then jump into a geyser to jump over her while she's rolling towards you, and to not have your entire squad get rolled over. At first it can be a little confusing to get used to, which led to me rewinding time for the first and only time in my first playthrough. But once you get used to it, it's a really cool mechanic and fight. 
Overall, every time you fight the Empress Bulblax, it's a fun and unique battle. So the Empress Bulblax will be put in the 18th spot on the list. Alright, the next boss on the list is the Bug-Eyed Cromad from Pikmin 3 and 4. This boss is traditionally shown as a mini-boss, and it shows up in both of the easier games in the series, which leads to the fights not being too difficult. But much like a lot of the other fights in Pikmin 3 and 4, they're still a lot of fun, even if they're easy. It's weirdly really fun to throw Pikmin at the Cromad's eyes and to pop them, break them, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying. It's a really easy fight and not too much to talk about, but it's just satisfying to fight it. So the Bug-Eyed Cromad goes in the 17th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Segmented Cropster from Pikmin 2. From one Crustacean boss to another, this is yet again another satisfying fight, but this time in a game that is one of, if not the hardest in the series. The Segmented Cropster is very threatening while fighting it and can be hard to dodge its crushing roll attacks if you don't have all your Pikmin flowered up, especially your purples. And the Cropster is very good at deflowering your Pikmin with its massive claw swings that have a surprising amount of weight behind them. The range on the claw attacks is very big and very likely to hit a good majority of your Pikmin after it gets up from you attacking it. But other than that, the fight is a lot of fun, and attacking its very colorful stomach is very satisfying with all the colors flying off of it. Just make sure to stay aware of the boulders before you attack. All in all, this boss is a very good mix of fun and difficulty, so the segmented cropster fits well at the 16th spot on the list. The next boss to rank is the Sand Belching Mirror Slug from Pikmin 3. The fight for this boss is really, really fun. You fight in a giant sand pit that moves freely as the boss terraforms it when it attacks. It can come up out of the ground and shoot sand and leave behind a sand hill when it goes back down, or it could create a sinkhole that drags your Pikmin down into it using gravity and then it eats any Pikmin that sinks to the bottom. The only way to attack the mirror slug is by swarming it when it comes out of the ground or throwing a bomb rock into its mouth when it creates a sinkhole, which then launches the mirror slug into the air and then allows you to attack it. There are also variations to its attacks like creating a bigger hill when it comes out of the ground, or it could shoot bigger sand balls, or the sand pits could be deeper with flat walls that prevent your Pikmin from getting out. But none of this really matters if you know the one trick that makes all of its attacks completely irrelevant. If you rush all of your Pikmin at its mouth at the bottom of the sinkhole attack, then your Pikmin will do enough damage to launch the mirror slug out of the ground without any of your Pikmin dying. It's a really weird oversight, and I don't know what people were thinking when they went for it, but it makes the fight really easy to deal with. Besides that though, the fight is really fun, but it can be annoying having to rely on the Pikmin's pathfinding to get around the terrain. Most of the time it's fine, but every once in a while it sucks, and getting out of the sinkholes is really annoying, especially when your Pikmin aren't flowered. So the Mirror Slug goes in the 15th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Armored Modad from Pikmin 3. For the first boss from Pikmin 3, it does a really good job at introducing the style of bosses in the game. In Pikmin 3, most of the bosses are like a puzzle, where you have to figure out how to actually damage the boss before you can actually fight them, where in other games, it's usually just throw Pikmin anywhere at the boss, and then try and dodge any attacks that come your way. The Modad's puzzle is very simple, as it should be for the first boss. Throw Rock Pikmin at its crystal shell to break it, and then you can throw Pikmin at its soft inside. Like I said, very simple, but still lots of fun, and the sound of breaking crystal in Pikmin 3 is so satisfying to hear. Also, you can break the Modad's crystal mandibles, which makes it so he can't trap your Pikmin and leaves it with pretty much no way to attack you, which is a really cool way to let the player make the fight easier if they need to. So all this puts the Armored Modad in the 14th spot on the list. The next boss on the list is the Ranging Bloister from Pikmin 2. Most of the bosses in Pikmin 2 are very straightforward in design, but the Ranging Bloister has one of the coolest mechanics for any boss in the entire Pikmin series. The Bloister's eyes and tail will either glow red or blue, depending on which captain you're controlling at the time. And depending on which color it is glowing, that is the captain that the Bloister targets. And by using this, you can get the Bloister to attack one captain, and then you switch the other captain to attack its tail from behind. It's a very cool boss design, maybe even my favorite. It would definitely be my favorite if it was executed a little better. The way the room is set up, you can easily get the boss stuck by just switching to your other captain to make it so he can't turn around, and you can kill it really easy and fast. It still can be difficult, and I have messed up the stun lock on it before, so it's not entirely broken, but still really easy. But the concept is super cool and one of my personal favorite bosses in the series, even if it is easy. So the Ranging Bloister sits at the 13th spot on the list. Next up is the Ranging Longlegs from Pikmin 2. 
It might seem a little strange that the Raging Longlegs is so much further up on the list than the Beady Longlegs, even though they're pretty much the same idea, just one is bigger, but the Raging Longlegs being bigger makes the fight so much more fun. It's no longer about fighting your aim in Pikmin AI, now it's more about being able to fit underneath its massive head and huge feet. At first the Raging Longlegs moves very slowly and if it stayed like this then this fight would be way too easy to be any fun. But when it first shakes off your Pikmin from its head, then the fun begins because it speeds up its movement by a lot. You could be super lame and just wait until it slows down before you attack again, but if you want to have some fun, you can keep attacking it while dodging its steps with split second movements in order to not lose a ton of your Pikmin. It's so much more fun like this rather than having to aim for its head like the beady long legs and then getting crushed by its feet while focusing on that. That's another thing about the Raging Longlegs, it's a lot easier to track its steps because it doesn't step nearly as high and the shadows are a lot bigger, so it feels way more fair if you get stepped on. Other than that though, it's a little repetitive of a fight, so I won't be putting it any higher. But still, I think the 12th spot on the list is a good spot for the Raging Longlegs. The next boss on the list is the Ancient Sirehound from Pikmin 4. Hot take, I think the Ancient Sirehound was an awful final boss from Pikmin 4. The first few stages of it are really easy with Purple Pikmin, and then the last stage is just unfair, because its roars have a huge hitbox, and if you're not already out of the way, then you can't get away from it in time, and then you lose like your whole Pikmin squad. It just doesn't feel fair to fight, but for a regular boss, it's still pretty good. The first few stages are really fun, but still easy, much like a lot of other bosses on the list, but it has four of these, so it has four times the fun stages, and just the one annoying unfun one. The Sire Hound is also very reminiscent of the Titan Dweevil to me, the regular and ice stages of the Sire Hound are like the water attack of the Titan Dweevil, the fire stage is, well, like the fire attack, and the electric Sire Hound is like the electric attack of the Titan Dweevil. And the Titan Dweevil hasn't shown up on the list yet, so you already know what I think of the Titan Dweevil. It's really just that last stage of the Sire Hound that ruins everything for me. So if it were just those first few stages and they were a little more difficult, then the Sire Hound would probably be an easy top 5 for me. But because of the Smoky Dog stage and all the other stages being too easy with Purple Pikmin, the Ancient Sire Hound is just out of the top 10 at the 11th place on the list. We have now arrived at my top 10 Pikmin bosses in the franchise, and what better way to start it off than the Sovereign Bulblax from Pikmin 1 and 4. You might have been confused that I never mentioned the Pikmin 1 Emperor Bulblax when I talked about the Emperor Bulblax earlier, and that's because even though it's still called the Emperor Bulblax in Pikmin 1, it is a lot more like the Sovereign Bulblax from Pikmin 4. Basically, Sovereign Bulblax is just Emperor Bulblax on steroids. It's the final boss in Pikmin 1, and also a very intimidating boss in Pikmin 4. The best way to deal with these guys is to throw bomb rocks into their mouth when they attack, which then stuns the Bulblax, and then you can attack it. In Pikmin 4, you can kill them very fast with Purple Pikmin, but if you can't kill it fast enough, then you better be ready for its jumping attack, which is its most deadly, as it has no limit to the amount of Pikmin it can crush. So you better get out of there while you can. Although, it's a lot more dangerous than Pikmin 1 because Pikmin are susceptible to tripping and you can't use the Charge Whistle or Ochi to get them out of the way very fast. In my last playthrough, I lost like a good 50 Pikmin to the jump attack, so this thing can still catch people who are experienced at the game off guard sometimes. Or maybe I just suck, but that's forget that. It's a really fun fight that is still a good challenge, at least in Pikmin 1. But yeah, really fun boss and it's very nostalgic to me and most others who grew up with Pikmin 1. So Zovereign Bulblex sits comfortably at the 10th spot on the list. Next up on the list is the Smoky Prog from Pikmin 1 and 4. Much like the Sovereign Bulblex, this boss is really fun and nostalgic. This boss is also a secret boss, at least in Pikmin 1 that is. You can only fight it if you arrive in the Distant Spring before Day 13, and even then, it's not an easy fight. The only way you can damage it is from its chin to its forehead, and if you miss or throw the Pikmin any further, then you can kiss that Pikmin goodbye, because the death trail behind the Smoky Prog will instantly kill any Pikmin that touches it. The Smoky Prog is the only enemy in Pikmin that can instantly kill a Pikmin without any sort of wind up to the attack as well. Not to mention that the Smoky Prog is pretty fast too, which makes it even harder to accurately throw your Pikmin onto its head, and then lose the Pikmin to the death trail. The Smoky Prog is easily the hardest enemy in Pikmin 1, which makes it such a fun fight, because if you can beat it without losing too many Pikmin, then it feels super satisfying to do, and even if you do lose a bunch of Pikmin, then what the Smoky Prog gives you will make up for that because the Smoky Rug drops a Golden Pearl upon death, which when sucked up into an onion, gives a whopping 100 Pikmin to whichever type you gave it to. That is the most Pikmin any item can give you, which is fitting for such a hard boss. So the Smoky Prog is 1. Hard, 2. A secret boss, and 3. Really rewarding to kill. 
I wonder how that transfers over to Pikmin 4. Spoiler, it doesn't. In Pikmin 4, the Smoky Frog just shows up on the later night levels. There's no secret way to find it. If you just keep playing, then eventually you'll see it, and it's not hard at all because of multiple item mechanics like Ochi, Purple Pikmin, and Lock On, to name a few. And it doesn't help that the Smoky Prog is both slower and the hitbox for its death trail is smaller. So it's not a hard or secret boss. But at least it gives a good reward, right? Not really. All it gives is some star pellets to give you more glow Pikmin for a temporary time. And it doesn't even give that much more than other strong enemies in the night levels like Ember Bulblaxes. But while Pikmin 4 didn't do the Smoky Prog justice, it was at least fun to see it appear again, and it does kind of fit the night level aesthetic. But Pikmin 1 is definitely my favorite version of the Smoky Prog. All in all though, Smoky Prog is a really fun and cool boss that deserves to be in the number 9 spot on the list. Next boss on the list is the Man at Lakes from Pikmin 2 and 4. Let's just clear the elephant in the room first. It has a gun to shoot your Pikmin with. How freaking cool is that? And not only that, but it can't be cheesed by Purple Pikmin because it's a spider boss. So that way it's both cool and an actual threat. The arena for the fights with the Man at Lakes are also very unique. The Man at Lakes starts as a steaming metal ball on a small ramp and you have to start attacking it to actually start the fight. And the way it avoids Purple Pikmin cheese is that in Pikmin 2, specifically Purple Pikmin can't latch onto it while it's in its ball form. And in Pikmin 4, it just quickly jumps up and spins around. So there's not too much time for Pikmin to deal damage. Then after it's up, the only way to dodge its gun is to hide behind terrain and objects in order to block the shot. And then in some of the areas, there's water around the center, which is the best place to attack it from because the ground is raised up a bit. So because of the water, the best Pikmin to use is Blue Pikmin. Of course, you can lure it away from the water, but then you don't have the hide advantage, so it's really up to you what you want. Other than that, there really isn't much to talk about this boss. Big spider with big gun. What more is there to say? So with that, the Man at Lakes fits comfortably at the 8th spot in the list. For the next boss on the ranking, we have the giant red bug from Pikmin 2 and 4. I mean, do I even have to say anything here? It's the giant bread bug, a bigger version of the best thing in Pikmin. If you didn't know, I absolutely love bread bugs. They're just so freaking dumb and cute looking, and they clean up whatever floor they appear on, so they're like your own personal janitor. And the giant bread bug is just more of that. And the giant bread bug has its own banger soundtrack too. Also, the giant bread bug is the only boss that can't purposefully hurt you or your Pikmin, at least in Pikmin 2. The only way it can hurt them is if you leave the Pikmin on a treasure or body that the giant bread bug brings down into its hole. So it's not really its fault if your Pikmin die. In Pikmin 4 though, the bread bug gets a little charge attack if you attack it. It makes sense that it would defend itself if it's being attacked, but it's so goofy looking that I can't take it seriously. Basically, this is my favorite boss of all time based on design, and I love it so much. But if we just look at the fight with it, it's kind of tedious and more just a treasure grab rather than a fight, so I can't put the giant bread bug any higher than this. But I think that the giant bread bug is in a good spot, the seventh place on the list. Next up is the groovy long legs from Pikmin 4. This boss, hands down, has one of, if not the best theme out of any boss. When I first saw the groovy long legs in the trailer for Pikmin 4, I thought it would just be a reskin of the Beady and Baldy long legs, but it was so much more. The groovy long legs is, in a way, a mix of the Beady long legs, the Raging long legs, and the Puff Stool, funnily enough. Its head is high up like the Beady long legs, which prevents the purple Pikmin from cheesing the fight, and it speeds up when it gets attacked like the Raging long legs does, which makes the fight more fun and interesting. And to add just a little more flavor to the fight, it spews out purple gas like a smoke machine, which has the same effect as the Puff Stool does, which confuses your Pikmin and makes them jump around. It's such a cool boss fight, but it doesn't stop there. The Groovy Long Legs also attacks the music, which, while it really fits the name Groovy Long Legs, the reason I really like it is because it helps you to predict when the Groovy Long Legs will take its next step, which makes it a lot more fun rather than having to pay attention to both its head and its legs in the fight, you only have to pay attention to its head, which is where you're aiming, which is one of the biggest reasons I dislike the Beady Long Legs, because you have to focus on its legs so you don't get stepped on, but you also have to aim for its head, it, it just doesn't really work well together in my opinion. So in the end, the Groovy Long Legs improves on everything that is good about all the other Long Legs fights, as well as adding even more. So the Groovy Long Legs is so far the best Long Legs boss in the series, and earns its spot at the 6th place on the list. We are now in the top 5 Pikmin bosses. These 5 are the best bosses that Pikmin has to offer, and to start it off, we have the Titan Weevil from Pikmin 2. 
When you first enter the floor that the Titan Weevil is on, all you see is Louis sitting on a pile of treasure, and seeing as the story is Olimar trying to find Louis, you put your guard down because you think you finally found Louis. But then when you walk up to him, all of a sudden the treasures grow legs and the Titan Weevil emerges, and uses those treasures as elemental weapons against you. It's such a perfect way to introduce the boss as it lowers your guard all to spring up on you when you aren't ready. But you need more than a good entrance to make it into the top 5. The combination of difficulty, satisfaction, as well as variety in this boss are absolutely amazing. The perfect way to bring everything you learn in Pikmin 2 together. And if I'm being honest, this might be the hardest boss in the entirety of Pikmin. At least while the Titan Weevil still has the Shock Therapist on him. Because once that's off of it, then the Titan Weevil is pretty much harmless. Because in the entire series, electricity in Pikmin 2 specifically is the only element that can instantly kill any Pikmin. Besides crushing, explosions, and the Smoky Prog and Ancient Sirehound attacks, but those are all more situational, while electricity is a lot more common. So the strategy is to use Yellow Pikmin to knock the Shock Therapist off, and then use any other Pikmin for the water, fire, and poison attacks since they're not nearly as dangerous. They are still dangerous though, so if you don't pay attention then you could lose a bunch of your Pikmin, which keeps the fight still interesting. As you can imagine, the fight would get pretty stale after a while, so to combat this, the Titan Weevil's weapons start to malfunction and the attacks become more sporadic the more you damage the weapons. And then once you knock all the weapons off, each with a satisfying snap, the Titan Weevil's shell falls off and it desperately swipes at you to no avail, and only knocks your Pikmin over, until you finish it off and it releases Louie, or until Louie releases it. The Titan Weevil is just such a perfect way to finish off Pikmin 2, and I can't see any other boss in the number 5 spot on the list. Also, cool easter egg, if you use a perp spray to finish the Titan Weevil off, it'll throw nectar and sprays all over. But yeah, Titan Weevil in the number 5 spot on the list. For our next boss in the number 4 spot on the list, we have the Quaggled Myrclops from Pikmin 3. When you think of a big boss in Pikmin, this is what you're gonna think of first. A gigantic walking island that creates a lake wherever it decides to sit down. The Quaggled Myrclops is one of, if not the most intimidating boss in all of Pikmin due to its size. It's not every day you walk into a boss battle in Pikmin and the entire arena starts walking towards you. And that's what makes this boss fight so special. But it's also incredibly fun to fight even with its enormous size. Everything in the fight feels fair to go up against while still being very stressful, especially when the Quaggled Myrclops drops its whole body into the ground and charges towards you. It's obvious and very easy to realize you just need to move out of the way of it. But when an enemy as big as the Quaggled Myrclops charges towards you while being louder than an air raid siren, it's incredibly nerve wracking and scary. And then once you figure out you need to attack its hooves so it falls down giving you access to its head, there's still the crystal you need to break with Rock Pikmin. So not only do you have to dodge its huge crushing attacks, you have to navigate it with Rock Pikmin and not let them fall into the water that is created from the Myrclops smashing the ground, which adds more variety to the fight and keeps it from becoming stale. Once you break the crystal, then you can get rid of the Rock Pikmin and not have to worry about them anymore. And then you have a choice. You can proceed fighting the Myrclops with either Blue Pikmin or Wing Pikmin. Blue Pikmin are safer and can't drown in the water, but deal less damage to the boss. On the other hand, Winged Pikmin can all charge onto it at once and latch onto the Myrclops' head and deal a lot more damage as well as dodge the licking attack that Myrclops has, but they are very susceptible to the crushing attacks and the water that the Myrclops brings. It's really your choice and I switch between them all the time based on how I'm feeling. And this once again demonstrates how fun this fight is. Most Pikmin fights have only one way of dealing with them, while the Quaggle Myrclops has variety in how you fight it. The Myrclops really has it all when you want to have fun fighting a boss, and that's why the Quaggle Myrclops is in the number 4 spot on the list. We are now in the top 3 Pikmin bosses of all time. These three are the pinnacle of Pikmin boss design, and I can't see them being beat by any other bosses anytime soon. So let's just get right into it with the Vehemoth Fossbat from Pikmin 3. Probably the hottest take in this whole video, but I think the Vehemoth Fossbat is the third best boss in all of Pikmin, but not for the reason you're probably thinking. The boss itself is pretty underwhelming. The attacks the Fossbat has are very slow and easy to avoid, but the arena is what makes it so good. I don't think there is a better arena for a Pikmin boss than the Vehemoth Fossbat. First off, the Fossbat is invisible in the dark, and wouldn't you know it, the arena is in a dark cave. Crazy, right? So in order to fight the Fossbat, you have to light up the cave, and wouldn't you know it, there are four small light bulbs to light up the room, which then stuns the Fossbat and allows you to attack it. So you have to weave between the attacks of the Fossbat while lighting up all the light bulbs in order to kill it. Now if you're playing on easy mode and you can go fast enough, then you can kill the Fossbat after like two or three light bulbs being lit up, but if you're on a harder difficulty or aren't able to kill it fast enough, then eventually you'll run out of light bulbs to light it up. And these small light bulbs aren't bright enough to light up the whole arena, so how are you supposed to kill it if you can't light up the room anymore? 
Well, there's one more part of the arena that, in my opinion, pushes the fight from a cool puzzle fight to one of the best bosses in the entire series. While exploring the arena and turning on light bulbs, you'll notice some piles of bridge pieces. At this point, you've seen them before, so you start subconsciously gathering them, not really knowing what they do yet. But then your light bulbs run out, and all you can do is gather the rest of the bridge pieces. So while dodging all the attacks on the boss bat, you collect bridge pieces until the bridge is finished, and on the other side is an electric circuit, like the light bulbs before, but bigger. And once you fill it in with yellow Pikmin, then a giant light bulb that is out of view lights up, and now the whole arena is illuminated, and you can freely attack the boss bat. The amount of multitasking in this fight is phenomenal, and is so much fun. And like the Quaggle Myrclops, you can go about this any way you want. You can be fast and aggressive, leaving yourself open to being attacked by the boss bat, or some of your Pikmin being picked off while they're carrying bridge pieces back without your protection. Or you can be slow and take maybe one or two days to finish it. Plus the fight gets harder the longer it goes on. After you get the boss bat down about half health, a cutscene plays where the boss bat roars and awakens all the mini boss bat spawners spread throughout the arena, which makes it that much more dangerous to go through. But if you want to be fast, then you technically don't have to worry about them, because they're only in certain parts of the arena, and you can just get rid of the ones that are in the way of your Pikmin carrying the bridge pieces. Like I said, it's just such a fun fight with all the multitasking of lighting up light bulbs, carrying bridge pieces, and dodging the boss bat. Truly, the Vehemoth boss bat is an amazing boss and deserving of the number 3 spot on the list. We've gone through the bad and the good to reach this point, and it all comes down to the final two bosses. Both of these bosses are incredible in their own way, but it all came down to one thing for me, which I'll explain when we get to the number one boss. But for now, in second place in the Pikmin boss ranking, we have the Water Wraith from Pikmin 2 and 4. If the Vehemoth boss bat is high up because of its arena, then you can throw that all aside, because the Water Wraith blows that right out of the water. No pun intended. You see, every boss has its own arena, right? Well, what if a boss had an entire cave as its arena? Well, in that case, you would have the Water Wraith. But let me backtrack a bit. The Water Wraith fight actually starts before you even get into the Submerged Castle, and that's because the cave is surrounded by water, hence why it's called the Submerged Castle, and it forces you to only bring blue Pikmin in, which is incredibly strange, because in Pikmin 2, at least for me, I always have purple Pikmin in my party, and if I don't, then I feel incredibly uncomfortable, and wouldn't you know it, but the Submerged Castle is perfectly designed to make you feel uncomfortable. And it doesn't help that when you're about to jump into the Submerged Castle, it tells you that there are all four main elements, and you only have blue Pikmin to deal with them. Once you actually get into the cave, the first thing you'll probably notice is that the music is a lot more ominous and tense, with the deep humming in the background. But other than that, there isn't really anything else that's particularly weird. So you go about collecting the treasures like any other cave, but after about 5 minutes of exploring, the screen fades to black, and then... Now all you can do is run. Run as fast as you can to the exit and go down to escape the Water Wraith before it crushes all of your Pikmin. But wait, what about the treasure you haven't collected? What if you could try and avoid the Water Wraith? For the third time in the top 5 list, the boss lets you be the one in control. You can run as fast as you can to guarantee your Pikmin are safe, or you can be a little more risky and try to get the last piece of treasure you need. It's so much more fun to be in control even while in as stressful of an environment as a submerged castle. Anyway, no matter what you do, you have to go to the next floor eventually. And now for the first time in Pikmin 2, you have to go fast. Pikmin 2 isn't really known for being time based. You have infinite days and time doesn't pass while you're in a cave, so you can really take your time. Unless you're in the submerged castle that is, because like earlier, if you take too long, then the water wraith will come and make things much, much harder for you. So you run as fast as possible and collect as many treasures as possible before he arrives. And then move on to the next floor and the next, and after four floors, you finally reach the final floor. And now the fight actually becomes fair, because now there are purple candy pop buds to give you some purple Pikmin. And because the purple Pikmin aren't overpowered enough, they happen to also be the only Pikmin that can make the water wraith permeable and able to be attacked. And that's that really. Much like the rest of Pikmin 2, just throw purples until it's dead. And then once the Water Wraith quote unquote dies, it really just falls off its rollers and runs away like a coward, which is a nice touch to see an enemy who isn't completely stupid and knows when to run. But yeah, that's really it. And Pikmin 4 is pretty much the same thing, although you have Ochi and other features like Lock-On that supposedly make the game easier. Turn it, quick, get out of the way! Guys, hop on! Guys, come on, pick up the apple. Pick it up. Stop! Stop locking onto the dead corpse there. Carry the apple. But for real though, 
Ochi makes the cave way too easy because you can kind of just run around the water wraith and it can't do anything about it, and it takes the whole suspense and dread of the cave away. But all in all, the water wraith is one of the most unique bosses in the entire series, and even if the actual fight with it isn't much, the cave as a whole makes up for it and easily solidifies the water wraith in the number two spot on the list. But there's still one more boss that is even better than any other boss on this list. So let's take a look at the number one boss on the list. After 43 bosses, we have finally made it to the number one spot on the list. So without further ado, I present to you the best boss in all of Pikmin, the Plasm Wraith from Pikmin 3. The Plasm Wraith does everything better than any other boss out there, and it combines the best parts of the top 5 bosses all into one, and makes them all even better than before. Let's start off with the beginning of the fight, or should I say, area, because the Plasm Wraith fight is basically the entirety of the formidable oak. It starts off with you having to transport an unconscious Olimar through a gigantic puzzle like the Fosbat fight. All the while, the Plasm Wraith chases you in a very similar way to the Water Wraith, and you have to traverse through different areas, building bridges, lighting up rooms, and killing enemies that very satisfyingly turn into golden goop when they die, which keeps the area from getting cluttered up. And a very considerate thing that the developers added was that if the Plasm Wraith catches Olimar, then you don't lose immediately, and instead the Plasm Wraith becomes permeable, and you're able to attack it to release Olimar and knock out the Wraith for a little bit. But you still have to retrieve Olimar fast, because if you don't, then the Wraith gets out of the cave with Olimar, and then you have to restart from the beginning. Although all the puzzles and bridges and lights and such that have been previously done will stay finished, which gives you a little bit of a head start when you come back. Eventually though, you'll make your way out, and then the real boss fight happens. The fight with the Plasma Wraith is a lot like the Titan Weevil, in that a majority of the attacks from the Plasma Wraith are elemental in nature, but it doesn't come straight from the Plasma Wraith. Instead, the Plasma Wraith spits out a box that turns into an elemental box or sphere or something like that, with the box in the middle of it. And if you use the right color of Pikmin for the right element, then the boxes will drop a bunch of the golden goop that the Plasma Wraith is made of. Speaking of which, that golden goop is the most important part about this boss. The Plasm Wraith is very unique in that it doesn't take damage like a regular boss. Instead, the more you attack the Plasm Wraith, then the more of its golden goop will fall off. The Plasm Wraith also shakes off some of it while in the process of shaking your Pikmin off of it. And the only way to damage the Plasm Wraith is to destroy the goop that is on the ground, so that way it can't absorb it back into itself. This mechanic is the most unique mechanic out of any other boss in the entire series and fits really well for the final boss. Also, the longer the boss fight goes on, then the less goop will fall off of it, and the Plasm Wraith becomes smaller and smaller to show that there is less goop on it. Overall, an incredibly amazing boss, from the challenging puzzle maze to the actual boss fight with the Wraith itself, I can definitively say that the Plasm Wraith is the number one best boss in all of Pikmin. Well, that's the ranking over with. Here's a tier list of all the bosses, so you can see my opinions in a few seconds. This video was a massive increase in work from previous ranking videos. The biggest one before was the Pikmin 2 cave ranking, which only had 14 caves to rank, and I pretty much tripled it with 44 bosses for this ranking. So if you watched all the way to the end, I really appreciate it, and please consider subscribing for more Pikmin videos. But apart from that, I've been AKB Rhino, and I'll see you in the next one.